What's going on, familia? We've all heard the phrase, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, right? Well, today I'm going to show you why that is with some real life examples and how you can turn the tables on that and come out on top. But in order to do that, we're going to first have to identify what is financially screwing us right now. There are three factors that stand out to me. You see, factor number one is inflation. It doesn't take a genius to know that we have an exorbitant amount of inflation right now. Now, for those of you that don't know, inflation is a general increase in prices, which in consequence lowers the value of your dollar. Now, inflation is actually good for the economy, but only if it is controlled and maintained at low levels. The Federal Reserve typically targets inflation at 2% per year. But right now, inflation is at 8.6%. Inflation has completely gone out of control. We have not seen inflation this high since 1982. Now that obviously begs the question, what is causing all of this high inflation, right? Well, most of this inflation is coming through supply chain shortage issues, but it's also being caused by the war in Ukraine. There's actually a lot of factors that affect inflation, but that's all topics for another video. The point for today is that inflation equals high prices in a lot of the consumables that we purchase. And we're getting hit with higher prices all over the place right now. We're seeing it in groceries, apparel, and transportation. Gas prices, gas prices right now are at $4.50 a gallon, at least in Texas. This time last year, you were getting that same gallon of fuel for $2.70 a gallon. And of course, we're seeing the high prices in real estate as well. Nationally, we have seen prices in real estate skyrocket with new home buyers having to offer 25 to 50 to even $100,000 over asking price on a, any single piece of real estate. I mean, it's completely insane how high we have seen prices go up on a lot of these things, especially real estate. That's just crazy. And so in order to combat this inflation, the Federal Reserve has a couple of tools. And one of these tools is interest rates. So the Federal Reserve hikes the federal funds rate, which then in turn increases our interest rates for anything that we use for our credit cards, for our vehicles, and for mortgages. And that actually leads me to factor number two, and that is interest rates. Interest rates are starting to go up quite a bit because now that they've hiked the interest rate, all of the loans that we take out on our credit cards, for our vehicles, and for our mortgages are that much more expensive to take out now, and therefore our payment every month is gonna be higher. Take my house, for example. My wife and I bought this house last year in November, and we got an interest rate for 3.375% on a 30-year fixed loan. Our current monthly payment is about $1,600. And now, with mortgage rates being at 6%, the monthly payment would be $400 more to the tune of $2,000 a month. Now, that's a real-world example that you could take away from this video. And us as the middle class are seeing this everywhere. And so while I was researching all of this, I really began to think, is there any way that we can come out of this? Like inflation is hitting us everywhere. Interest rates are going up. So if we were to take out a loan on anything, we're going to be paying a lot more every month for it. Is there anything that we can do to overcome this? Um, are, are, are we going to get compensated at our jobs? Maybe can we get paid more? to kind of overcome this inflation. You see, sometimes companies, well, at least good companies, offer you something that's called a cost of living, right? So a company will be aware of the cost of living for a certain area, and if they ask you to go move there and work there, they will provide you with a raise depending on the cost of living for that area. You see, here I thought that maybe the companies that we work for could kind of give us a little bit of a raise and help us compensate for all this high inflation that we're seeing out there. And oh boy, was I terribly wrong. And so that leads me to factor number three, a wage price spiral. Well, a wage price spiral basically means that if we were to see an increase in our wages, people will be more likely to spend more, which will cause more demand for goods and services. That in turn causes prices to go up, which causes employees to demand higher wages, which then increases demand, which then increases the price, which turns this into an upward spiral until there's no more value in the currency. Everything, it's the bedrock of the economy. If you don't have price stability, the economy is really not going to work the way it's supposed to. It won't work for people. Their wages will be being eaten up. 
So we want to get the job done. This, is, this inflation happened relatively recently. We don't think that we're seeing a wage price spiral. So wages are not principally responsible for the inflation that we're seeing, but it, it, going forward, they would be very important, particularly in the service sector. So in regards to the economy, a wage price spiral is really, really bad. But this also means that us, as the working class, aren't going to get ahead because we're not going to see that increase in wages to match the inflation and the high prices that we're seeing right now. So those are the three factors that I'm seeing. It's the inflation, obviously, the high interest rates, and this wage price spiral that we're trying to avoid. And so we can't get ahead with an increase in wages. So how do we turn the tables on this? How can we come out on top and not get financially screwed here? Well, at least in my opinion, we have to own assets. Assets are things of value, things that can make us money. And right now, my favorite asset is real estate. My wife and I bought our first piece of real estate back in 2018, and we have been able to grow our portfolio since then. We now have three investment properties that help us generate income every month and help us stay afloat amid this whole inflation crisis. And so it's been my experience that assets can provide a sort of support and insulation from the worth of your cash. And if you're diversified in your investments, which should be the ultimate goal, then you'll be in the best financial shape that you can be in. Because if you really think about it, this system really is rigged against us. I mean, we're not gonna win either way. We can't see higher wage increases and we're also seeing higher prices at the pump and everywhere else. So how else are we gonna overcome it if we don't own assets, right? Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. I would say that we fully understand and appreciate uh, how the pain people are going through dealing with higher inflation, that we have the tools to address that and the resolve to use them, and that we are committed to and will succeed in getting inflation down to 2%. The process is likely, highly likely to involve some pain but the worst pain would be from, from failing to address uh, this high inflation and allowing it to become persistent.